היי סיליקון, וולקאם טו מי טוק, דה באדל אוף פוליסיס, אופה זרגו ורסס ג'ייסון סקימה. תודה רבה מאוד שאתם מגיעים לכאן, מי נאמי שמעון טולץ, ואני עושה את זה טוב כי זה משהו מאוד פרסונלי שאנחנו חושבים ואני חושבת שאני חושבת ואני רוצה להגיד את זה איתכם. אז אני רק רוצה להגיד את הסרטים האלה, ובאמת, מה שאנחנו הולכים לעשות, אנחנו הולכים לדבר על... why you would want to use uh, either one of them. And then secondly, what are the advantages and disadvantages of the different uh, uh, usages of OPA, OPA's Rego and the JSON schema. So let's jump into it. So my name is Shimon. I'm the CEO and co-founder of The Tree. And The Tree is a company that prevents misconfigurations in cloud native workloads such as Kubernetes. So um, I'm also very active within the community. I run an AWS user group that has 8,000 members. I'm an AWS community hero. I'm very much involved within the CNCF community. And I really live and breathe uh, DevOps and CI, CD, and, and all those fun topics that uh, you know, this conference is also about. So let's talk about how we even got to here. So, um, What we provide the tree is a solution to prevent misconfigurations in cloud native workloads. And we help delegate infrastructure as code responsibilities and Kubernetes responsibilities to dev teams. So um, it's an open source centralized policy engine that allows companies to actually define policies. And we're going to talk a lot about policies today and um, integrate them within the CI CD, within the dev platforms, let's say VS code, or actually even as an admission controller webhook inside your Kubernetes. And this really allows you to uh, configure rules. Let's say you want to make sure that there is a memory limit, CPU limit, liveness probe, readiness probe in your CI CD pipeline, for example. And, you know, in order to, to get deeper into um, examining, should we use OPA's Rego or JSON schema, let's look at what types of misconfigurations do we want to identify in order to test out which engine do we want to actually use if you were to uh, maybe run to build your own policies or build your own solution. So number one, when uh, people write a, uh, you know, configuration files, whether it is Helm charts or uh, YAML files and so on. Number one, you want to identify syntax errors. You want to make sure that it's even a valid YAML, you know? Secondly, you want to make sure that this YAML, for example, is a valid schema. So Kubernetes has different versions and let's say the latest one in AWS to this date is 1.22. So it runs a specific, um, schema version. So if I'm going to try to use API versions that are removed or that are deprecated, they're either not going to work or I'm going to get errors. So I want to make sure that I'm working at this correct schema version. Secondly, we want to really delegate the knowledge and really help people in our organization make the right thing by applying policies within the pipeline. So let's say I want people to pull Docker containers that are not using the latest tag, but have a specific tag, a specific version, a specific SHA. Um, so by writing a policy that prevents you from actually pulling a Docker with the latest tag, I will also you know, educate people in my company um, when the tests that I run using the policies will fail, they will see why and they will start to learn. And this is good for uh, knowledge gaps. And this is also good because it will not reach our production. And thirdly, we want to, to make team alignment. So maybe there are some rules and, and policies that we want to actually configure that are um, not industry best practices. They're specific to our company. So maybe we have a private Docker registry and we want people to only pull images from this Docker registry. Or um, maybe we have different configurations, different labels that we want to apply. All of those things can be achieved by using uh, custom policies and by centralized policy solutions. So as we said, we want to enforce best practices and define the policies that we want. So let's say you want to make sure that you have a cron job deadline. 
And so it won't really go forever. You want to make sure that you have a liveness probe and readiness probe and Docker registry and resource limits like CPU and memory. And you really want to distribute all those policies inside of your CI CD pipeline. So now you're saying, okay, Shimon, you, you convinced me. I want to implement policies in order to achieve all of those great things. But which policy engine should I adopt? Um, and this is why we're here. And this is actually the question that we asked ourselves. So for our engine that we want to use, should we enable our customers to write custom policies and submit them to us using OPA's regular language or by using JSON schema? And we went into this journey and, uh, you know, when you go deeper down the rabbit hole, you find different things that you did not think about. So what are the policy best practices that we wanted to, to go by? So it was important for us that we have a solution that is simple, it is simple to use, nothing too complicated. It is general purpose, whether you want to make sure that you have labels or that all of your servers are named Shimon or that you have a memory limit or any use case that you want, it is general. Um, that it is relevant, that it is something that is being widely used, that it clearly states what you write is what you see. Because, uh, you know, it, when, when uh, writing uh, tests in a way, you want it to be as intuitive as you can. And um, this is the journey that, that we went into. So let's start with the first one, Rego. So what is Rego? So Rego is a language that was developed by uh, OPA, Open Policy Agent, which is a graduated project of the CNCF, the Cloud Native Foundation. And Rego is actually the official language of the OPA, Open Policy Agent. It was inspired by Datalog, and it was designed mainly to implement checks against JSON. And, and, and it is intended for policies and not programming in general, like you don't want to build an operating system in a Rego, for example. So what is the syntax? So it is designed to, to really be easy to read policies. Um, Rego goes and runs against the JSON data scheme, and then it uh, applies different tests and decision-making. And it, uh, it's more like a query language. So you, it reads the, the data that you have, that you provide it, and then it applies different logical queries and it decides whether it abides by the policy or not. Um, very interestingly, today, the example that I'm giving is around misconfigurations and config files. But for example, there are many companies like permit.io that uh, do a authorization as a service and they use OPA and Rego because they want to verify whether a person has access to a resource. So it's, it's like a completely different use case, but it also works with, with policies. You can say, I have this object. Can this person perform this action and does it work according to the policy or not? So how does it actually work? There are three main layers. So there's a rules definition, there's the import statement that uh, you uh, use, and then there's the uh, package that, that you um, execute. So here we have package main, this is the package itself, and then um, it will pass if the, the, the data that we pass to it, input, it has an has a attribute method that is equal to get. And if not, it will not allow it, it will fail. So actually Rego supports um, modules, so it is very, very nice. And as you can see, there is a directory here and you can use multiple um, um, modules and separate your tests into different uh, libraries. It is really, really nice. And basically a, a policy, a, a Rego policy is a collection of rules. So you have a rule that test that, I don't know, foo is bar, and then you have a collection that tests different uh, cases. So what is the input? Um, input is a, a data keyword that is saved. You can't use this keyword. And anytime you execute a test, uh, you actually have to go and uh, query this input a variable and, and apply different tests. So you can go and say, does this input 
has the label environment and is the label environment a, a QA, dev, and, or test. And you actually query it inside. So um, the output is, again, is, is in JSON documents and, and you can work and, and query your um, data in it. So how do you actually implement a Rego statement? So if we go and look at a regular example in a JavaScript, uh, we can look at a, a, a Rego example. So it's the same example as I showed you now. So you have an allow flag that says it will pass if the data that we pass to it input uh, has a method of get. Um, so it is really straightforward. It tells you what it is doing and it is really straightforward to understand. Um, under the hood, there are, you can use many different if blocks, end blocks or blocks. So you can have a really a variety of, of uh, rule sets that, that, that you can build on top of them and on top of them. And you can end something and or and or and or and create really complex uh, test cases if, if you need so. So in this case, we see that we have two allow statements. The first one is the same input method uh, get. The second one is check if it is post and if the user is an admin. And again, if one of them does not uh, a return a true, if it does not exist, then it will fail. Um, and, and the way it works is really, uh, let's say you have a, you want to run tests against a Terraform plan. So you go to Terraform, you do a Terraform plan, you, you have your JSON, you go and you, you test your, you write your regular code, you run it against with OPA to test it. And then you can allow or deny the, the test to, to, to be applied. So this is a short summary about Rego and we're going to now talk about JSON schema and then do a battle between the two and see a, a different aspects and, and how they, they really uh, compare to each other. So what is JSON schema? JSON schema is a vocabulary that allows to validate, annotate and manipulate JSON documents. It is a global RFC, like it is really, really broad. It, it is, um, provide a clear human and machine readable interface. So it is on, on both sides, really, really, um, conven uh, convenient. Um, and it really helps you validate data like for automated testing quality and so on. Now, as opposed to Rego, um, so Rego is only implemented uh, in, in OPA and OPA is, is uh, very specific. So you actually need to bring OPA and, and, and really always use it. JSON is the old good JSON. You all know JSON. We know JSON for years. We know JSON. We used to know XML. Now we know JSON um, and you know YAML, we know TOML. So really the, because it's a really JSON schema is a wide, um, applicable standard. So what happens is that there are many, 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 like a lot of, of, uh, packages that implemented this spec and almost every possible language uh, has it and you can use it everywhere you want. And um, so I don't think anyone's going to be too surprised here. It's a JSON. <laughs> it's, it's really simple. So a hello world for JSON schema is just JSON. And um, I'm not gonna educate you on JSON, but let's, let's talk about JSON schema. So you define a schema and then you have a data and then you check whether it, it, uh, it corresponds and whether it, it works. So here's an example, there is an ID title and so on. And it says that it's uh, an example of a person and the person has the properties of first name and it should be of type string and it will describe the person's name and last name and it should be a string. And then you have an age and age has to be of type integer. And then we can pass in uh, data that describes a person. And let's say if I, instead of writing age 21, I would have written age red. It would have said, Hey, that's a mistake. It should be an integer. This cannot be a string and vice versa. 
So you define the schema and then you pass in data and you validate it. I know, crazy, right? It's <laughs> very simple. Um, another example, so in this example, we're doing uh, longitude and latitude. So again, you define the properties. In this case, we have a latitude, it's a number. You can give it scoping, minimum, maximum, and then you pass it data. So as you see, very similar to Rego, you can start going deeper and deeper. So from only enforcing the type, then you can start enforcing the, the size. And, and finally, it always ends up with a regex somehow in uh, programming. You can do regexes and you can verify whatever you want, whichever way you want. And it really, really works um, nicely. So um, really, I, I chose to, to show one example of a very popular um, open source um, a repository module in JavaScript because everyone loves and hates JavaScript. So I chose JavaScript. And um, it's like at 11,000 stars repo. And, and here's an example. So it's called AGV. So there's a schema. It says there is an object, properties, foo and bars. One is an integer. The second one is a string and foo is required. Um, and then you just pass it to, to the validate um, variable. And then you just do a AVG compile and you give it the schema. So now you have the schema. And now you take the data. So in this case, we have a data of integer of one and a string of ABC, and then you perform a validate. And then you do validate against the data and you check whether the data works according to the schema. Now, the very interesting part is, you know, when, when we actually went into this, we, we interviewed our users. We have more than a thousand companies using our product. And we had a lot of built-in rules and we really wanted to expand the usage of our um, solution. And we started interviewing people and asking them like, which types of custom rules would you want? And it was very interesting because a lot of them just wanted something that is simple. And we, we started to have different categories to ask them like, what, in this category, does this really resonate to you? Is this important to you? So now we're going to have a Mortal Kombat style fight between the two. So the first category that we're going to look at is learning curve. Basically, it's not rocket science on both sides. It's pretty easy to learn. And I personally think the JSON schema is even easier than Rego because you don't need to learn a new language because it's just a JSON and there is an implementation in even in common Lisp or any language that you would like. So it's really, really easy for you to use. Um, but I gave them both a win. So they still have 100 HP each one. The second one is the syntax. So in this case, um, I think that Rego has a richer options for policy decisions because it was JSON schema is broader sense uh, engine. So it is really wider. So you can achieve the same things as you do with Rego, but, but uh, maybe with regexes and stuff that are less um, easy and intuitive. While with Rego, you have uh, conditions and conditions and more and more uh, uh, options to go down the rabbit hole, but it is more proprietary and harder to master. But in this case, I'd say JSON schema loses. The next thing is maintaining and debugging. So, um, Really, I think that because Rego is, is a proprietary language in a sort of a proprietary engine, OPA, the debugging and the developing, and it's, it's, it's not like, again, debugging JSON in any language that you would want because there are so many implementations. So um, maybe it is more down to the purpose, but uh, again, Rego is harder to master. It is more complicated. Um, and it is less versatile in, in that regard. So JSON schema wins, in my opinion. In terms of collaboration, really both of them, it's a, it's a very, very good situation. Rego is a child of OPA, which is part of the CNCF uh, foundation, which is amazing. JSON schema, again, has so, so many implementations and RFC and, and everyone uses it. and. There's so, so many things that are based on JSON schema that 
it is really a, a no brainer and both of them has very active slacks and communities and, and stack overflow and, and you can use them. In terms of versatility, obviously JSON schema wins because again, you're really, really locked up with Rego. And in a way it is a bit uh, harder because if you want to change something in Rego or OPA, there's only one place and, and one location to do it and one like new language that you need to learn. But in JSON schema, there's so many implementations and it is more versatile. While Rego works only with OPA. Um, in terms of community assets, JSON schema is really, 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 really seasoned. There are so many implementations of like anything you would think of. And because it is so easy and intuitive, I think it wins. I want Rego also has examples, but it is really harder to master and, and it is much younger, much younger. So this is my take. And finally, in terms of performance, again, you know, you can have JSON schema with uh, compiled languages that are like uh, uh, really, really fast and, and you can apply it to even if you have a high volume traffic that you want to check if, if the schema works or not, and you can do it in C++ or whatever you want. Well, again, Rego is, is a, you, you get the idea. It's just up. So to, to sum up, you know, there is no one right answer, but for us, a JSON schema was, was the answer to this battle, because while both of them are really, really nice and great. And, and I think that, that they're awesome. We just, for us, users were telling us, listen, Shimon, I don't want to learn yet another language. I don't want this proprietary things and, and this weird with semicolon languages and stuff. I just want something simple. So here I give to you a custom policy that is written and that is being used with our engine, with the tree. Um, and uh, the way it works in the tree, you can use uh, our solution to specify policies in a policy as code mode. So you, ju you just have a policies.yaml file and you can specify whether you want to turn on or off the proprietary policies. And secondly, you can, there is a custom rule key and then you can put in custom policies. And this way you can extend our engine and people are doing really crazy things. Uh, our project has more than 5,000 GitHub stars, so it brings really a lot of people. So let's look at this example. So first of all, you're gonna tell me, Shimon, you chose JSON schema, but you're, set, you, you're showing me a YAML example. What is this? So, you know, JSON and YAML, they're interoperable. Operable. So it was really easy for us to, to give people the ability to write it in YAMLs because in JSON, this would have a lot of, you know, semicolons and it, it would really not look so good. So they write it in YAML, we change it to JSON and, and we, we really scan it because it's, it's not a problem. And here in this case, as you can see, custom workload in correct environment labels. So we want to make sure that the workload that we're going to run on our Kubernetes is, is tagged correctly. And it is, it has uh, an environment tag that is one of prod staging or test environment. So what we're going to do is we're going to give the identifier of the, of the policies. Then we're going to give the name. Then we're going to give different default failure message. This is what the developer, the DevOps person sees when the rule fails because they want to know what to actually do. And we tell them use only approved environment label and then we, we go deep and we say, okay, so look at properties, metadata, properties, label, properties, environment. And then if there is an enum, look if there is one of prod staging test and um, we tell it that environment is required and labels is also required. And this way you can really have both worlds. It is really readable, easy you don't really have to write complicated code or ifs or, or complicated things. It's really intuitive and it's really, really easy to use. And um, for us, this was the right approach. So thank you very, very much. Um, really, if you have any questions, I'm available. And um, go ahead, 
check it for you and see which one works best for you. And as I said, we can also, you can also run all the policies in the tree if you want. So thank you very much. Bye-bye.